today we're going to be doing back to basics your sewing machine and we will be looking at the sewing machine parts. What you're going to need to have is a sewing machine and it doesn't have to be a particular brand. We're looking at basic parts that are universal on all sewing machines. You're also going to need the parts of the sewing machine page which is labeled and you'll need the parts of the sewing machine page that has the word bank. Our goals today are to be able to locate the machine parts and to learn their functions. So you would start by putting your machine in front of you and I want you to look at the parts of the sewing machine page that are labeled already. They're, each part has a number and we, I want you to look for number one on the page and it should be the needle. Your needle is right here. Your needle is going to be carrying your top thread. It's going to go down into the bobbin area and it will link with the bobbin thread and actually make your stitch. The next part, number two, is the presser foot. This is the presser foot. It's going to hold your fabric down and it, it will be against what's called the feed dog and I'll show you those in a moment. And it will pull the fabric through and let you stitch. To raise and lower that presser foot, you have a presser foot lever and it's sometimes here in the middle. Your machine may have it in the back. And at this point I want to tell you that your sewing machine manual is really important. Uh, you could get yours out and you can look and find these parts and know where whether yours is going to be on the side or in the back. The next part, number four, is the needle plate. This whole area is the needle plate. Under here are those feed dogs that I mentioned, and they're metal and they're little gears that they're going to, to pull forward and they're going to go down and they will rotate back. And so that's what's going to be pulling your fabric through. When you're sewing, you should never push or pull the fabric. Let the machine do the guiding. The next one is your hand wheel. It is over on the side. Um, it's going to move while you're sewing and you can turn it toward you and if you watch your needle here as I turn it toward me the needle is going up and down. That would allow you to put the needle in at a particular place you want to start sewing. The next part number six is your spool pin. It's on the top of your machine this machine, because it's portable, in order for it to fit into its case, it folds down. Some machines, it would be sticking out horizontally. Um, and so you always want to put it down before you put it in the case so you don't damage it if it does do that. The next part is a bobbin. This is a bobbin. They can be metal or plastic. They're going to hold the thread that goes on the bobbin on the bottom part of the sewing machine. And we will learn more about that in another lesson. The next part is the foot pedal. This is the foot pedal and normally it would be sitting on the floor and I like to think of it as the gas pedal. It's what makes your machine go. It gives the electricity and to see the side you can see that when you push it with your foot the farther down you push it the more electricity it will give your machine. The next part number nine is your reverse lever or button and on this machine it's right here you see that the arrow go it's going up 
and then it's turning back. So when if I were to push that, m the machine is going to pull the fabric back, and then when I release it, it's going to let it go forward again. And that allows you to make a knot at the beginning and at the end of any sewing that you're doing. And that's important because you don't want your stitching to come out. And the last thing is number 10 is your stitch width adjuster and on this machine I do not have it plugged in all of it is going to display here over here all the stitches that you can do with this particular machine and again if you have your manual it's going to help you know how to set this to get these particular stitches to work on your machine we're back to basics, your sewing machine, and today we're going to be learning to wind the bobbin, which is also filling it with thread, and we're going to be inserting the bobbin into the bobbin case. You're going to obviously need your sewing machine, you need a spool of thread, you need <laughs> the bobbin, <laughs> and having a pair of scissors is a good idea because a lot of times we need to trim the end of the thread. Again, if you would use your manual, you can look in there. This is something I've printed from the manual for this particular machine, and it has the pictures and gives you nice directions. Also, like threading the top part of the machine, th it is numbered. And so when you're working on it, you can look at the numbers. There's actually little pictures on this one. The parts that we're going to use are the spool pen. There is a pre-tension disc, and it's this little raised part here. And it's going to come over to the bobbin winder shaft. And to activate it, you will actually push it with your thumb and when you do that and give electricity it's going to fill the bobbin and your needle isn't going to work. So you begin by placing the spool of thread on the spool pen. You're going to use the pretension disc. So we're going to pull this over and on this machine it goes around this way and I'm using this guide picture to know that. And then I have to put this thread through one of the holes in the bobbin. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to switch hands for just a minute here to do this. You have a larger hole right here that you're trying to get it through. Hey, I did it. And then there is, this is spring loaded. When you push it down, the spring's going to hold on to it. And you're going to push it uh, over. It's nice and tight. And give it electricity with your foot pedal. Your needle should not work. You just wind a little bit on, and then you're supposed to trim this bec excess that you were holding because it'll tangle up. And you keep going. If you continue, it this piece here, whoa, will <laughs> will will be against the thread filling there, and it'll automatically stop. Now that we have thread on our bobbin, we're going to use our scissors to cut. We're going to push it, the spool back over and we can pull it off. The bobbin is going to go down here in this part. And different machines open different ways. Sometimes it, you may even have to remove this part and all of this would be behind here. This machine, I pull the little button and the cover comes off. I'm going to set it in. There is a little slot right here and you want to 
hold the bobbin still with your finger pull this thread so that it comes through there and then we need to thread the top part of our machine so we're going to go back follow our numbers Got to raise that thread take up lever. Right. Thread our needle. The next part is called fishing. You want to hold the thread from the needle. You turn your hand wheel towards you. Your needle's going down in. Keep turning, and you can see here that I have the pieces going down in and it's going around and picking up this thread and when I tug a little bit here's the loop and I can pull it out so now you can see that this thread is coming up through underneath and you want to take both threads put them to the back and you would put your cover back on and you would be ready to sew. We're back to basics again, your sewing machine, and today's lesson is going to be about threading the top part of the sewing machine. You're going to need your sewing machine, you're going to need your thread the machine page, it's going to show you where to thread the machine and the parts that you're going to use. You also are going to obviously need a spool of thread, and you're going to want to have scissors because you may need to trim the end of the thread if it's rough when you try to put it through the needle. The parts we're going to use today are the spool pen, the thread guide, the tension slot, the thread take-up lever, another thread guide, and the needle. And now we're going to actually um, show how to thread the sewing machine. You're going to put your spool of thread on the spool pen. You're going to pull the thread over and put it under the guide. Then you're going to pull it down and back up. And this is your thread take up lever in here and you have to kind of pull it around. You're going to come back down and we're going to put the thread behind this piece and then you would put it through the needle. You need to look at your manual. You should have a nice picture in there on showing you directions. You also will find that your machine is numbered. You put your spool pin on and then when I look at my machine there is a number one here that's telling me to go to this part. Number two is in the front, three is down here, the arrow is bringing me up and then it brings me back down to this one and finally down to the bottom. And now you can practice threading your sewing machine. Today we're going to continue back to basics your sewing machine. Today's lesson is discover stitching. You're going to need your sewing machine. You're going to have hopefully read your um, Discover Stitching information, and you're going to need a plain piece of lined paper. It could be notebook paper or just something from a tablet, as long as it has straight lines. You want to check your sewing machine and make sure you're set up for a straight stitch. And again, you can use your manual to figure out which one you need to use and um, what you, numbers you need to set. Our goal today is to experiment by stitching on this drawn lines and also to get a feel for your machine. Learn to control your paper and in, in the next time hopefully some fabric and feel how it works. Then you're going to place your paper under so that the needle is lining up above one of these lines. Lower your presser foot and then you are going to use your foot pedal 
that is your gas pedal like in the car and you're going to give some electricity and it should go forward. I also want you to notice that there is on some machines a speed control. I have mine set on one arrow. If you're going to find that it's going to go very slowly there, if you move it over, I want to show you how it goes faster. For what you're doing today, you should keep it on a slow speed. So you're going to give the electricity and you're going to go forward. I want you to remember that if you go off of the side of the road a little bit in your car, you don't pick the car up and move it back over. You guide your piece of paper, you guide your car back onto the road. When you get to the end and you find that your needle is down and you can use your hand wheel to turn and remember that it raises it up and then raise your presser foot and remove the piece of paper. And at this point you can hold your paper up to the light and you can see the holes where you stitched and see if you went straight or not. And now you can turn the tutorial off and you can continue stitching on your paper to practice and see how you do. We're back to basics again with your sewing machine. Today we're going to work on stitching corners and curves. You're going to need your sewing machine. You do not need to thread it. We're going to sew on paper again. You will have a straight stitching page you'll have a page to learn to do corners and you will have a page to learn about curves. So you've done the straight sewing before. You're going to remember that you're going to place your paper underneath the presser foot. You're going to lower your presser foot and then you're going to use your foot pedal to give electricity. Use your gas pedal and get a feel for how it works. I've speeded mine up a little bit this time and you're gonna keep stitching. Also remember just like a car if I go off the edge of the road I can't pick the whole car up I have to guide it back over to the road. When you get to the end, if your needle's in, use your hand wheel to raise the needle, then raise your presser foot. And you would continue and sew all of the lines. Now let's try the corners page. You're going to, again, you have a place here that says start. You're going to put your paper under line it up with your needle. You're going to sew as close as you can to the first corner. So you're continuing on to the corner. And when I get closer, I can actually st raise my foot off of the foot pedal, stop giving electricity, and I can turn the hand wheel and sew to that corner. You might find this if you were making a collar or a, a costume or something that you have this nice little corner you have to make. So I'm at the corner and I'm going to leave the needle in. I'm going to raise the foot and I'm going to turn my paper or if it was fabric, turn the fabric. Lower the presser foot and I can continue sewing. And remember that you're guiding, you're not pushing or pulling. Let those feed dog do the work for you. We're gonna keep going until I get close to the corner. And then I'm gonna use my hand wheel again. And we're gonna go right up to that corner one more stitch. There we are. Ra needle in, raise the foot, 
lower the foot, and you can continue. And I want you to continue doing that, and you'll work your way into the middle. By the time you get to the middle, you're going to be a pro. All right, we're ready for curves. Again, you have a starting point, and you want to place the paper, and it could be just like fabric. Sometimes you have extra. You just have to kind of let it roll along in there. We're going to lower the presser foot. We're going to put our needle in, and I am in the right place. You're going to go slowly. The thing with curves is just to go slowly and use your hands to turn. You're guiding. So you're guiding along. Please notice that I'm keeping my hands away from the needle. I'm back here. Oh, I went off. I have to guide it back over just like my car. I can't just jump over there. <laughs> it's getting pretty curvy down here. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to look at my speed. I'm actually going to slow it down some more so that no matter how hard I press with my foot, it's just going to go slow and I'm going to be able to guide it. Now I'm going to say when I get here, it's trying to go off again. So I really need to go back this way. I'm going to leave the needle in and raise the foot and just turn the paper a little bit so I can guide it around that part of the curve. And you would continue in this manner to make it all the way around. And you see, I'm not staying perfectly on there myself. So guiding, guiding, that's what you're doing. All right, I want us to look over here on the other side. We have sort of zigzag lines. And it's basically your the same principle as your corners. We're going to start and we'll go When we get close to this point, I'm going to stop with the electricity and the pedal foot, and I'm going to guide it with my hand wheel. And then I raise, leave the needle in, raise the foot, and change my direction. I'm getting close. I'm going to use my hand wheel again without electricity and get to that corner. Needle in, raise the foot, change directions, and you can keep on going in that manner. All right, that is sewing curves and corners. This is lesson six for Back to Basics, your sewing machine, and today you get to practice what you've learned. You're going to stitch a picture. You're going to need your sewing machine. You'll need three colors of thread, three spools. I have red, navy blue, and kind of a burnt orange brownish color. This is the page that you will be working on dot to dot stitching and you'll notice over here that you have three different shapes and we're going to start with the circle you're going to be using those skills that you've been working on stitching on the other papers I'm going to find one and this time I'm actually going to look there and I'm going to put my needle in that number one dot and then I'm going to lower my presser foot. I have it on slow, and number two is over here. So we're going to, there we go. 
we're going to go over to number two. When you get close to that next dot, remember that when you need to turn, you don't have to give it electricity. You can use your hand wheel, leave the needle in, raise the foot, and three is back over here. So I have to turn the paper all the way back around. And then I'm going to sew over to three. I'm using my hand wheel. Leave the needle in, raise your foot, and four is back over here. And you're going to follow around. You can see that you're going to start to do a curve now. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen is back at the top. You'll continue in this manner until you've sewn through 14. Ooh, too fast. I'm guiding the paper. I'm not pushing. If I get to a point where I feel like I need to slow down, I can raise my foot off of the presser foot and I can use my hand wheel. So I'm going to raise and I'm going to turn. One more. Needle in, raise the foot, and come back up. So I'm going to stop there because I don't want to give away what the picture is going to be. When you get finished and come up to 14, you're going to remove your paper and you're going to pull the um, red thread off and you're going to change to another color. You don't have to change the bobbin. And you, I want you to see that you've got the picture there that's starting to form. And then when you would do the third shape, which is the square, you would change to your third color of thread, and you would have your picture done.